I, 29 female, am getting married to my fiancé, 30 male, of over three years, November 5th. He has an older brother, 33, younger brother, 26, and two younger sisters, 28 and 22. I get along really well with his parents and siblings, ever since when we first started dating. I asked his sisters to be bridesmaids and his brothers are groomsmen. All his siblings act happy and normal still, except his 28-year-old sister, M. When we first started dating, his sister, 28, was cool with me, but as soon as we got engaged, she flipped a switch. It started with her storming off when we announced our engagement, Christmas time last year. She apologized and said it made her feel bad about her recent relationship, lots of therapy and issues going on, and accepted being a bridesmaid anyway. She's gone from being friendly to gradually ignoring me anytime she sees me, but also remaining involved in wedding activities, like when I went dress shopping and had my bridal shower. She criticizes everything about the wedding every step of the way, out loud. My future mother-in-law and fiancé have both called her out on her behavior, but it doesn't help. I've confronted her about this gently, I don't do well with conflict, and asked if I did anything wrong. She denies anything is wrong and brushes me off. Fast forward to last Sunday. M asked me to grab some coffee out of the blue. She said she's given a lot of thought to admitting this part of her life to someone, but felt she had to. She said that she and fiancé fooled around and eventually had S, which continued for a bit but stopped years ago before me. She said she can't help but feel the only reason they stopped was because society gave them no choice and that anything besides what they swore would be a secret couldn't exist. According to her, they stopped when fiancé moved out of his parents' house. I don't believe one word of it. I just couldn't take it anymore. I freaked out and told her she's lying. I told her to never speak to me again and that she will not be allowed anywhere near my wedding. I told fiancé and he was shocked. I told him I don't want her at our wedding and I know it hurt him. He didn't push back, but he said it's going to cause a lot of family issues and they're going to tear her apart if they find out what she told, did to me. He called her and lost it on her. He asked me to give it a little bit of time before I pull the plug on her being at the wedding, even though it's warranted and that it's ultimately my decision, but he does want her there. I have a lot of anxiety from this building up, and I don't want her there at this point. Who even says something like that? But I just feel guilty because I know that I can't remove her quietly from the wedding. That she's going to be his only sibling not there, and not in photos, etc. I don't even know how we would explain it to family. It's been a couple days, and she hasn't reached out, but I'm just so confused because it's next month and I don't want this to blow up last minute. Am I the a-hole? I hate to be this person, but are you sure she's lying? There are lots of people in this world who harbor and hide dark secrets for decades before they are exposed. I was leaning towards it being a lie, but the fiancé still wanting her there makes me wonder. If one of my siblings said that crap to my fiancé, nah, <laughs> uninvited immediately, especially with the wedding so close. If it was like a year before the actual wedding, I'd hold the invite based on them receiving therapy, etc., and how things progressed. I just can't imagine how a sibling can have one say such statements and still want them to be at their wedding. This is a hard one to answer. How are you sure she is lying? I'm not even sure I can explain how, but besides it being completely disturbing and him never showing any signs of being capable of disturbing behavior, I just trust my partner. We've spent the last few years being vulnerable to each other and building that trust. Was M ever territorial about your fiancé? Like, why the sudden change in behavior following engagement? I mean, engagement signifies you are not just another girlfriend she has met, but her brother's the one, making her feel threatened. She was really chill and sweet when I first met her. It went from 0 to 10 when we announced the engagement, and it progressively got worse from there. But she's also been having issues with her own relationship during that same time frame, and everyone seems to be using that as an excuse for her acting like this. The fact that your fiancé still wants her there to be invited to my wedding tells me that she might not be lying after all. If that was true, he would be so disturbed that he wouldn't be comfortable around her for a long time. Tell him that if he still wants her to be in the wedding, you might lean towards believing her and watch how he reacts, not the a-hole. Yes, the a-hole. She confided in you and you got mad at her immediately without any proof that she is lying except your instinct. This story seems to explain her radical change in behavior. You should have listened to her carefully and taken the accusation seriously instead of dismissing them immediately. One thing that is conspicuously absent from your post is a statement by your fiancé that this did not happen. Your post makes it sound like your fiancé is upset that she told you. It does not say your fiancé is upset because she lied. If the accusations are not true, 
Making the accusations indicates that she has some serious issues that need to be dealt with by a professional. If the accusations are true, she has some serious issues that need to be dealt with by a professional. This is not a situation where you ostracize her from the family. This is a situation where you get her the help she needs. I'm not trying to be argumentative because I understand everyone will have their judgment, but I didn't get mad she confided in me. I've been holding in a lot of stress from her for almost a full year now. I kind of just take it. So when she told me that, it was what triggered me. Because of course I'm going to believe my fiancé over her because I'm in a relationship with him and not her. She didn't have any proof besides what she was saying. And I'm not trying to ostracize her from the family. That's why I'm hesitant to even go through with uninviting her. Because I don't want to cause more damage to their family. He did deny it. But he was in shock she came up with something like that. And she is in couples therapy. I think her mom urged her to go to solo sessions as well. I, 24 female, am the oldest of four children. Over the past months, I realized that my siblings, 15 male, 19 female, and 22 female, generally only talk to me when they want something, money, transport or food, etc. And generally, I don't have a problem with being their support system. A few months ago, I got invited to a movie premiere. I was super excited and asked my siblings if they wanted to come with me. They said yes, and I explained that because I was inviting them, I'd have to buy tickets for them to enter the venue. The tickets came to around 1K per head. So I asked my siblings again if they're sure they wanted to come, and they again said yes. I explained it was a very important event for me because I recently launched a small gifting business, and all the actors, directors, and hotshots would be getting the gifts, and if it went well, then I'd have a three-year contract with company. My siblings assured me they'd come, and I was super excited. Evening before the event, I went and delivered the gifts, and afterward I went to grab some dinner with my mom and siblings. My mom told me she was happy I'd be taking my siblings with me when my brother announced that he would no longer be coming. I asked him why, and he said that his friend invited him to the arcade, so he'd be going with his friend instead. My sister, 19, then claimed she forgot that the event was the following evening, and she made plans, so she also wouldn't be coming. I got upset and reminded them that they'd made a commitment and that I'd paid for the tickets. They said, it's just money, it doesn't really matter, you'll make more. I was angry, so I just ate my food and left for my place. At least my sister, 22, would be coming. So the day of the event comes and I went to fetch my sister and she wasn't home. I called and her phone was off. I ended up waiting outside her apartment for 30 minutes with no reply and I went to the event alone and lost out on 3k worth of tickets. Event finishes and I head home. I decided to not fight anyone because I was just emotionally drained. In the morning I start scrolling through Instagram and boom, on the stories pops up my sister and she was clubbing with her friends the whole evening. I get a message from my brother later that day asking me to buy him a new set of headsets because he broke his at school. I blocked all my siblings. I haven't spoken to them in a month. My mom called me last night and asked me to check up on my siblings. I told her I don't have any siblings. She's now angry with me saying I'm overreacting and being an a-hole because I can't expect everyone to just drop everything for me last minute. She also says me blocking them is being overly dramatic. I'm just tired of the fact that I'm always there for them for whatever they want and whenever they want, but they could care less about me and basically treat me like a piggy bank when they want something and like a doormat whenever I don't prove useful to them. So am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Holy crap, OP. You wasted 3k because they decided to ghost you on a commitment? That's terrible, and it absolutely sounds like your siblings are extremely entitled. Don't spend or give any more money to them until they learn the value of money and that work had to go into earning it. They will likely not understand it themselves until they've had to be independent for a bit. Not the a-hole. Block your mom, too. She's enabling your siblings to act like spoiled brats. The it's just money comment is so entitled. You did something nice for them, and they tossed it back in your face when something better came along for each of them. Do not reopen communication. You're better off not being in contact with people who are not only using you as a cash cow, but clearly do not care about your achievements or your feelings. The movie sounded like a very big night for your career, and the people you'd most expect to be there cheering you on couldn't give a rip. I hope at least that the night was a success for you and your business. I have three nephews. They were born in January 2020, November 2020, and February 2022. My sister is pregnant again and due in December. 
The succession of pregnancies so close together has taken its toll and my sister is on bed rest. Besides using the washroom and going to medical appointments, my sister doesn't leave her bed. She is under the care of specialists. Me, my parents, and my brother-in-law's parents have been doing what we can to assist in looking after her and my nephews. The succession of pregnancies meant my sister had to leave her job. My brother-in-law works, but his job can't be done remotely. And with my sister on bed rest and three kids under age three at home, they need help. They can't afford daycare for my two oldest nephews, and my youngest nephew is still too young yet. But their lives are in complete chaos and relying on us to keep things afloat. Me, my parents, and his parents chip in where we can. Even my grandparents and his grandparents have helped a little despite their ages. But the bulk of it is being done by me and my and his parents. I'm happy to help if only to make things better for my nephews. I want to be a good aunt. They are just kids and this mess isn't their fault. I've even refrained from commenting until now because of how exhausted and floundering my sister and brother-in-law are. They don't need me to tell them how much of a mess this is. I said something to my sister only because I was tired of hearing her complain about her pregnancy and bed rest. I'm sure it's not a picnic to be dealing with a high-risk pregnancy, but this situation is of her and my brother-in-law's making. Me, my parents, and his parents all have full-time jobs, and we are rotating to ensure my sister and my nephews are cared for. I'm a paramedic, and I have nightmares of getting called to their address because she and the baby are in distress. It's a real possibility given how fragile her pregnancy is. My sister and brother-in-law are university educated, and where we live they can access contraception and birth control at no cost. Doctors have repeatedly warned them about getting pregnant so soon after my sister gave birth. There is no excuse for the mess they have created. I love my nephews more than anything, but my sister and brother-in-law have completely destroyed their lives for the foreseeable future. When I told my sister I don't need to hear her complaining because she got herself into this situation, she got really angry. My brother-in-law chided me the next day for what I said as well. It may seem harsh, but I am already exhausted from my job and giving up my days off to help them. I do it for my nephews, and I never commented throughout all the pregnancies before now. They are both angry at me, though. Not the a-hole, but I think it might be time for you to step back from helping them so much because this isn't healthy for you and your relationship with them. What are they expecting to do once the baby arrives? Will you still be expected to help? Can they look into government assistance? Not the a-hole. You're allowed to snap. You've been pushed past your breaking point by your own empathy and selflessness. If it were me, I'd eat bonbons and take a nap. No one else's kids is my problem. You've sacrificed a lot for your nephews and sister. She should quit whining and get her big girl bra out of her purse. Your brother-in-law couldn't even manage his penis snot for two years straight. That's your sister's problem, not yours. This won't stop, by the way. In 2023, she'll be pregnant again. It's some sick fetish for a lot of males. You may need to wash your hands of this to preserve your mental health. Not the a-hole. Their lack of proper planning does not obligate you to be a Mary Poppins stand-in. To conceive a fourth child when they cannot afford childcare for the ones they already have is stupid and selfish. My friend, Ash, 19 male, and I, 18 male, both got part-time jobs at a small bank branch, and our duties involve assisting with customers' inquiries before directing them to the right counter for their services. I would say customer service in a bank is definitely harder to deal with compared to other workplaces. But since I had worked multiple part-time jobs beforehand, I think I sort of had an easier time with customers compared to Ash. We've worked there for a month now, and our colleagues have picked up that customers generally prefer to approach me for inquiries compared to Ash, most of them noting that I am good with customer service. I also get along with most people easily compared to Ash, as he often lacks social cues and often makes inappropriate jokes. Ash calls all these pretty privileges instead, which slightly annoys me. While I do acknowledge the fact that I look a little better than the average beauty standards, I do try to be humble about it and never talk about my looks. Ash, however, constantly jabs me for looking good, as if it's an insult, but since I do think he tends to feel insecure about himself, especially about his weight, have just ignored my remarks. Today, during a casual conversation, one of the bankers, I don't know their position, but I think he's probably the banker's manager if that makes sense told me I could consider banking as a career for myself in the future, and joked that I could go to him for an interview after graduating. I told him that I would consider it, but when I told Ash through text about it, since I was actually seriously considering it, he told me the banker was probably joking because I had pretty privilege and would probably have an easy career in whatever workplace I chose to work at anyways. 
That ticked me off, as it sounded really condescending, so I told him maybe instead of accusing everything of going well for me on pretty privilege, he should begin working on himself and his insecurities, which we both knew he had plenty of. He got mad and told me I shouldn't be the one to tell him to fix his insecurities, as I had lots of things going well for me through luck. I had a full argument through text and, eventually, our mutual friends got to know about our argument. Some agreed that I came across as an egotistical a-hole, but some said Ash had this coming for a long time. I still have to work with Ash for two more months, so that's kinda… Uh, right now. Should I apologize? Not the a-hole. You don't need this bitterness and jealousy in your life. I'd low contact with this friend. The reality is that in many jobs, being attractive is a plus, but it's rarely a substitute for doing your job well. It's unlikely that managers are going to try to recruit you if all you have is a pretty face. Your friend is unwilling to focus on himself and what he can do better. He's being lazy and just blaming the world for his deficiencies. Not the a-hole. It's extremely invalidating to dismiss someone's success as having just come from luck or from other factors that they don't have any control over. The fact that he has a hard time with social cues may explain why he doesn't understand why you are having an easier time than him, but it does not excuse his dismissiveness and disrespect whatsoever. I ask you to consider what he is bringing to this friendship, because the way he's acting is not like a friend. He's acting like a jealous person that you know that is trying to invalidate your accomplishments and drag you down rather than admitting that he might have some room for improvement. He doesn't think there's anything wrong with him, so rather than coming to you for advice and recognizing and appreciating that you might know some things he doesn't, he's instead trying to undermine all of your accomplishments.